Now let's get spaced out. This week on Spaced Out, we are looking at Star Trek First Contact. This is the second Star Trek movie to feature the Next Generation cast and arguably the only Next Generation Star Trek film that is truly any good. And indeed, this is a movie that a lot of people will hold up as being one of the very best, maybe the second or third best of any Star Trek movie. I'm not as sold on it. This is the one where Picard and company fight the Borg in the past as the Borg have traveled back to Earth's past to stop Zephram Cochran. <laughs> I'm just realizing how goofy all of this is to people who are not as dyed in the wool into Star Trek as I am. In any rate, there's a scientist named Zephram Cochran in the past. He's played by James Cromwell, and he has just invented warp drive, and he's about to take the first warp flight, which is a big step forward for humanity, so the Borg have traveled back in time to try and stop it, and the Enterprise has traveled back in time to try to stop the Borg. This is a solid and fun and very entertaining action picture. I continue to question the instinct that the producers had to recast Captain Picard, the eternal diplomat, as some sort of an action star, but the, you know, the, the damage is done on that front. The movie also does fall flat at some times. Um, there tend to be some stretches where, particularly the stuff dealing with the with Earth, you know, most of the uh, the movie split between ha part of the crew trying to help Professor Cochran get there, get his warp flight off, and Picard and Data and a couple other dudes hanging around the Enterprise trying to stop the Borg from taking over the Enterprise. The stuff on the Enterprise tends to be more exciting than the stuff on Earth, and it's a shame that the stuff on Earth falls a little flat from time to time. Solid direction here from Jonathan Frakes, uh, following in the footsteps of Leonard Nimoy as the Star Trek first officer to take over the director's chair. Frakes has a real flair here and does some really good big screen action directing. And it helps that he clearly knows the materials and the character. The other thing that elevates this movie from you know, some lesser Star Trek fare is the Moby Dick angle. Now, it's, it's a little trite, a little rote. Star Trek likes to return to the well on Moby Dick a little bit. Star Trek II had used the Ahab illusions with Khan pretty solidly, and they like to keep returning to that. But what's nice in First Contact is that it's not the villain who has the Ahab inclinations, but rather Picard. And we get a nice through line through the second act of Picard, who had previously, back in the TV series, been assimilated by the Borg, uh, you know, having a real chip on his shoulder about it and wanting to revenge himself upon the Borg and letting that interfere with his making solid choices as a commander and putting the Enterprise and some of his crew at risk because he's blinded by his pursuit of the Borg. Um, the data stuff doesn't work so great for me in this one, if I'm being entirely honest. It's sort of interesting, but not that interesting. And I think the Borg Queen, while understandable that you'd want to give the you know, J Borg Gestalt consciousness a single face, it falls a little flat as well. Still, I don't mean to beat up on this movie too much. It is really solid entertainment, which is why I'm giving Star Trek First Contact three and a half stars. And don't forget to visit our website, northmetrotv.com slash everymovieever. There, you can watch reviews of every movie we've ever covered here on the show, as well as complete episodes. That's northmetrotv.com slash everymovieever.